I got a great suggestion from a YouTube comment recently. They asked about the details on the startup procedure for the TBM, which is definitely an interesting part of flying the plane. It was one of the more intimidating parts of transitioning from flying piston aircraft to turbines for me. After I did it about 20 times in the simulator, though, I started to feel more comfortable starting a turbine than I ever did starting the piston in the Cirrus. We went through various ways a start can fail. There's a hot start where the ITT temperatures are exceeded. There's a hung start where the RPMs never get up to normal levels. And there's a wet start where you have unburned fuel left in the engine. While we practice those in the sim, I won't be showing those in this video as thankfully I've not experienced them yet in real life. What I can show you here though is what the start process looks like when using the ship's battery and what it looks like when using an external ground power unit or GPU. Before we dive in, know that I'm not an instructor in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to share my experiences here. For the definitive videos on this, check out the links I put in the description for Dyer's YouTube channel. They've got some great stuff. So the first startup was performed with the battery as the source for power. The engine was around zero degrees Celsius, so the oil is relatively thick. My battery's probably three years old or so, so while it's doing fine, it's kind of nearing time to replace it. One indication of that is how low the voltage gets during the start sequence. That's shown on the horizontal gauge with the B on it. A key check before we use the battery to do a start is that the voltage is 24 and a half or better. I'm not going through the full checklist here, but we'll pick it up at about the beginning of the start sequence. We've turned on the strobe lights, we looked around to make sure nobody's walking near the prop. The aux boost pump is turned to the on position and the cast message that indicates it's running is verified and then we dismiss it with the master caution button in the upper left of this video. CAS, C-A-S, or crew alerting system is just a place to see warnings, alerts, and status information for certain systems. The timer started on the PFD screen by using a button on the right side of the yoke. Then the momentary switch is used on the upper panel, off screen here, to activate the starter. The starter is a motor that's used to spin up the engine during the start sequence, but once the engine is self-sufficient, it's running on its own, the starter motor starts taking power off the engine and becomes a generator to give us electrical power. So the starter starts spinning up the engine and the first thing we check is that the starter and ignition cast messages display. The starter cast simply tells us the starter is running, which you can hear it audibly anyway. The ignition cast tells us that the igniters are ticking away and making sparks. Those will ignite the fuel once we add it to the engine later in the process. I think about it like a really fancy version of lighting a gas grill in the backyard. Once we see that those are active, we verify that oil pressure is coming up and that the ITT is below 150 Celsius. If we add fuel when the temperature is higher than that in the engine, the likelihood of the ITT getting too high during the start sequence is significantly greater. That's not a problem on the first start of the day, but it is something that you need to watch if you've recently shut down the engine. Often just letting the starter continue to blow air through the engine for a few extra seconds at this stage is enough to get the ITT down below 130, even in the summertime. After checking the ITT, we watch the NG value right above it. We're looking for it to get above 13% before we add fuel, and we're paying attention to how quickly it's getting up to speed. If it's really lethargic, we'll be on high alert for a hot start possibility. A slow spin-up of the NG is another sign of the batteries having a harder time providing the required current. I will often glance over at the volts around this time to get an idea of how low they are. In the summer, when the oil is warmer and the battery is happy, I usually see it drop only to about 19 volts, but in this particular start it gets down as low as 15.8. We want the NG over 13% because that's telling us how much air is blowing through the engine. When we add fuel, things are going to get really hot and that airflow is the only thing keeping the temperatures in check. Once we see it over 13%, ideally more like 15% or higher, we add fuel using the throttle. We do that by simply lifting up the handle to get it over the gate and we put it in the low idle position. Now we're watching ITT closely, not only its current value but also how quickly it's moving up. If it moves up way faster than normal, we can expect an over temp. We don't want it over 850 generally. I've yet to see it go over 800 in this plane. That said, we are allowed to be in the range of 850 to 870 for 20 seconds maximum, and even in the range of 870 to 1000 for five seconds max. I don't expect to see that happen as long as I take good care of the battery and make sure the engine is cool enough before adding fuel. 
We started the timer earlier because we wanted to see NG make certain amounts of progress by certain times. The first check is to see that it gets to 30% before 30 seconds have elapsed. In this battery start, I barely made that time, if you give me credit for having started the timer a couple of seconds before actually getting the starter moving. The next check is that you get to 50% NG before 60 seconds have run out. The starter has a run limit of 60 seconds, and if you use it multiple times in a row, you have to give it a wait time in between. I imagine that's to let it cool down, but I'm not totally sure. Each reuse of the starter requires a longer wait time in between. The fuel injectors have two stages. The first stage gets the engine up to around 40% NG, and then the second stage also kicks in to add more fuel. You can see that happen in the ITT as it starts to cool off in the 30 to 40% NG range, and then goes back up again for a bit as the extra fuel is added automatically. Around 53% NG, the starter automatically turns off and becomes the generator. Then we use the throttle to put the engine into flight idle mode, which also unfeathers the prop in the TBM 900. We watch to make sure the NG gets around 69% after that. We also go ahead and activate the inertial separator if we've not done that already. This helps prevent dirt and junk from getting into the engine inlet. If you're on a dirty ramp at start time, you can turn that on even before starting. Since it reduces airflow to the engine a bit, it will cause the start to be a little warmer, but I've not really seen it have a big negative impact. Okay, so that's the start using the ship's battery. The next morning I came out to the plane on a really cold day in Denver. I asked for a GPU hookup so I could use that instead of the battery. I didn't really need it, in fact, since the airplane had been in the warm hangar all night, it was actually warmer than it was the previous morning. But I wanted to use the GPU anyway so we could record the difference here. The line crew plugged it in and we basically did the same start procedure. The only difference is that instead of setting the switch to battery mode, we used the GPU position. We verify that we're seeing 28 volts and not something more like 24 and a half or 25 like we did with the battery. And after the start's complete, we move the switch back to the battery mode and ask the line crew to disconnect the GPU. We wait to go into flight idle mode until they're done. That way the prop stays feathered and the wind hitting the guy outside is only kind of crazy, not super crazy. Using the GPU makes the start sequence way faster. What takes 50 seconds to happen on the battery only takes about 30 seconds with the ground power hookup. It was pretty impressive. So that's it. Hope this deep dive video was interesting. I really enjoyed making it. Keep those ideas coming. I need all the help I can get.